warm welcome to our lecturer, Dr. Asom. Today, me and my groupmates, Faris Imran and Haris Rashid, will be pre presenting on the Indigenous of Mahmeri people. My name is Kumaira, and I will start off this presentation with the introduction and cultural elements. So the, these Mahmeri people is an ethnic under the Sonoy group. Uh, almost all of the Mahmeri people live along the coastal region of the west part of Slango, which is from Sungai Pele up to Pulau Keri. The term Mahmeri carries a literal meaning of forest people, meaning Ma means people and Meri means forest, hence forest people. Next, their economic activity remains rooted in agricultural and fishing because that's where they find their um, side incomes um, away from modernization. They are classified as a society that still believes in animism and depends on the forest and the sea for survival and spiritual purposes. Next, uh, moving on to the cultural elements, they are known for their masterful wood carvings. Um, many of them are skilled in carving statues that are made from wood. Their carvings include deities, humans, flora, and fauna figurines. And these carvings have gained recognition worldwide and especially from the UNESCO. Their handicrafts produced of the Mahmeri community in Sungai Bumbun, Kuala Langa, they typically have high artistic values and the potential to be recognized at an international level. Next, um, exp expressive masks worn during dance rituals to represent ancestral spirits. So um, as we all know, these Mahmeri people, um, for example, the, tradi the traditional mass dance from the Jo'o of the Mahmeri group is considered as the main attraction for tourists. Jo'o is the only mass dance um, by the Orang Asi tribes in Malaysia. And this mass dance is a non-ritualistic ceremony frequently performed by people during Ari Moyang, weddings and different blissful events to welcome the spirits of their predecessors participating in the festivals. So majority of the Mahmeri community, they still follow the uh, animistic, um, superstitious and naturalistic beliefs, which um, they, be they still believe in their Moyangs. And um, yeah, they still, uh, they still believe in their Moyangs. So basically, um, these Mahmeri people still follow the, a small number have converted to Islam or Christianity and the phrase Moyang means ancestor in Malay, in Malay language. And however, for the Mahmeri people, Moyang carries meaning for both their ancestors um, and other spiritual beings or spirits. And they believe that the mortals and humans live on the sixth world that is known as the Anam. And meanwhile, all of the Moyangs are their ancestors and the good spirits of the spiritual being resides in the seventh world, or also known as the Titujo. Lastly, um, they do pan pandanus weavings. Uh, so this pandanus leaves, also known as the screw pine, are seen everywhere on the Kerry Island, and these leaves have a nice aroma. And thus, they are used to wrap rice, meat, or fish. And these pandanus leaf weaving or anyam making, which are processed into colored strips, is in accordance with the tradition of the Orang Asi tribes. And this um, type of weaving, this pandanus weaving, is one of the most significant activity of the female members of the Mahmeri community. And they use pandanus to create mats, bins, bujam, battle pockets, caps, and embellishment, and numerous other crafts. And they also use this weaving as, I mean, during ceremonies, and they are given as gifts as well. Um, I will pass this on to Harris to present on the empirical evidence. Thank you. Hi, Harris here. So today I'll be going through the empirical evidence section of this infographic. First point I would like to point out is the cultural aspiration. So cultural aspiration is described as an example. So wood carvings in the Orang Asli culture is often depicted through the influence of dreams sent by the ancestors or deities or spirits that act as a sign for future happenings. This is first seen by Dr. Jim Abbott in the 1970s when he discovered that the orang sea carvings were originally designed based on the dreams. And so then there is the point of convergence where there is a correlation between faith, belief and spirituality with their products which relates back to the post first point. So oftentimes uh, it is described by the orang sea that when they do something, they do it for the spirits. Nothing is for themselves. So when it comes to wood carvings, it's usually done to please the natural forces. So for instance, if they kill an animal, they will carve an animal out of wood and put it in the place where they killed that animal. So this was further studied by Dr. Nofusin in the year 
1990s, if I'm not mistaken, when he first when he first came to the island, he saw that there was a few of the sculptures lying around. So he picked it up. He asked the orangutan why is it outside. So the orangutan said he killed something, so he replaced it by using the said sculpture. So moving on to the next point, in current years, there has been something that is known as cultural decay among the orang asli. This is due to their inability to continue their cultural practices such as wood carving and origami weaving due to the agricultural occurrences in the settlement and the community. Um, it is basic knowledge to know that Pulau Keri is actually a plantation that is owned by San Dabi. So every year there will be an expansion when it comes to agriculture. So they have less land to themselves. So this results in less um, less materials that they can collect and use. So what happened is with the numbers of uh, materials they can use decreasing, they have less of these materials to make their products. So that is why I can see that cultural decay is happening. And there is a survey done by some Sang Dabi um, recently that shows that one of their main materials which is the nere batu wood and also the mangrove pandanus leaves are declining so the only way they're gonna get it back is through going through the back alleys of the island itself which is very hard very remote to access and it takes a lot of um, effort for them to get these materials Okay, next is the part where we talk about their belief as a whole. So the three points above actually highlight the point of belief, which is that the orang asli believe that all beings such as living things, animals, humans, plants, even inanimate objects have their own deities and spirits that come with them. So in their daily life, they don't just look through stuff and they be like, oh, this has no significance to me but when they look at let's say a carving of a mask and they'll think that oh this actually brings a story this actually brings a spirit and this is often represented in the stories to these items animals objects and they in their language they implement the sounds of these animals such as the tiger they go by the language of onomatope as grunting noises that shows that it is a tiger so by just going through their basics of their language it shows that they embody the animals the plants human beings living things and urban objects because like i said animal no um, based on their language animals are represented by sound so what happens if they forego this belief is usually it could result in curses illnesses or national disasters and it is often clear as how it is described in earlier years by sir edward valentine Carey when he see when he arrived at the island um there was a story that says that during the time he was trying to find a settlement settlement on the island he went through the island with the orang asli and then what happened was um, when he found a clearing he told the orang asli why not we make the settlement here but then the orang asli just stood and listened and they heard woodpecker noises bumping on wood so the orang asli told him that it is a bad idea to um, make a settlement here because of those noises so it, it was later studied by um, Sir Edward Valentine Carey and is written in his journal. Uh, back then, it described it was described as this woodpecker noises. It is often a bad idea to you for you to be near it because woodpecker is a type of bird. So when there is a bird, usually there is a predator that preys on this bird. So usually, what preys on a woodpecker is a venomous animal, which uh, the easiest example I can give you are venomous snakes so that's why it's a bad idea to make a settlement near that noise because snakes are often spotted in that area so if let's say they forego this and they do build a settlement there the worst could happen maybe their house will be infested with snakes and such so 
these are the few examples of um, empirical evidence that was collected over the years. Um, they are a bit dated because recent study on the orang asli is a bit uh, a bit dodgy and it is also not to say it is not correct but most of these studies are done by overseas entities which sometimes have some sort of language barrier between them and the orang asli as the orang asli is known to speak in the Malay language but most of the time they prefer to talk in their own language which is uh, onomatopoeia and an uh, older form of Malay so it often differs what they do, what they believe in when it comes to comparison with the Malay culture which is often not really represented by whatever cultural um, differences they have so that's all from me and next I'll be handing out handing it out to my group mate to do the next part of this presentation. Hi, my name is Mohamad Farisimran and I am one of the group members. And our group topic, which is the indigenous of Mamal people. Today I'll be talking a little bit into the implication of this topic. So for the orang asli, is the foundation of their substance and culture. Whereas the contemporary world, the meaning of nature is connected mainly to the development plans. The Mamari people highly respect and are very closely rooted to nature where their belief, their faith and spiritually they look at animals, plants, uh, and they, they believe that these things have their, their own spirits. While the, I guess, current community look at untouched forests, untouched plants, plants uh, for development plans of the country to develop of where well, you can see a lot of business goes into agriculture goes into uh, fishing and also plantation uh, moving on for the second implication there is a gradual evolution of consumption practice of these people from self-sustained uh, consumption to a more materialistic type consumption practice. There's a lot of reports uh, regarding this section where they view that this tribe or Mamari community have gradually changed their view towards a more a more materialistic type and uh, what, what do they call it? A better way of living because because of this a lot of their tradition has slowly uh, not practiced as much as they used to because they want a more uh, lucrative 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 uh, businesses that that align with other communities Uh, and lastly, the third and last implication. So, one of the tradition of these people is wooden carvings. So, most of wooden carvings was used before this for expressing themselves, as I said earlier. But nowadays, as the generation grows, it is said that uh, this tradition only produce for the sake of continuing and to put one and two at houses at the houses while the rest of their uh, wooden carvings are used for trading to the outsiders to generate side income this is why as i said earlier their views have slowly changed from 
self-fixing consumption or more materialist, materialistic type consumption. This is also another reason where it is reported that the younger generation of Mahmeri people have slowly fade away with with this uh with this practice and go into a more more uh, a more well 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 set income businesses uh, moving on from the application was the conclusion part to summary to summarize this topic government should help them by giving these Mamari people a better opportunity to introduce their culture to other cultures and communities which help which will help them greatly and commercialize them better. This can help them improve their tourism site and more. This also can make their life uh, much more easier and better life while also having the ability to preserve their unique culture and can prevent their belief and practice from dying out of passion with their younger generation. This is it also highly recommended for future benefactors to focus on the people's education for a long-term development benefit. That is all for me. Thank you.